Hello, and thank you for stopping by the Toyota Dream Project virtual booth. My name is Tanisha Jackson Warner, and I am the founder of the Dream Project. Let me also say I am an HBCU graduate. I attended Alabama A&M University. On behalf of Toyota and the Dream Project, we are thrilled to be here today as sponsors, but most importantly, to be here and support you in driving your dream forward. For over five years, Toyota and the Dream Project have traveled the nation, empowering the dreams of thousands of dreamers. So it was only fitting that we partnered with Brandis and Harlem's Fashion Road to fuel the future of fashion. So today we have a wonderful conversation schedule with Shiona Torini, who you're about to meet and hear from shortly. Before I dive into that conversation with Shiona, I wanna just remind you of a couple things. Number one, now that you're here in the Toyota Dream Project virtual booth area, make sure you take the Toyota My Style quiz. By taking this quiz, you're gonna learn a little something about your style, you're gonna learn a bit more about Toyota, and you will be entered into a chance to win a digital prize. That's right, throughout this entire program, Toyota will be gifting digital prize packs. And we want you to win one. So make sure to take the Toyota My Style My Way quiz. Also, please stay tuned in for the entire program because at some point you're going to hear how Toyota and the Dream Project will be fueling the dream of an emerging designer. We will be awarding the HFR Drive Dreams Community Grant to three emerging HBCU designers. It's gonna be a special moment, so I want you to stay tuned in. So without further ado, let's get started into our fireside chat with an iconic dreamer. Make sure you pull out your notebooks, your pens. This is the moment where you wanna soak up the wisdom. This is the dreamer that's realized her dream in fashion, and she's about to give you some nuggets of wisdom to support you in driving your dream forward. So Shiona, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to, to speak with you in depth like this. Well, I want to kick off by just hearing a little bit about you. If you can tell the viewers a bit about yourself, what you do, and how did you get to where you are today? Um, well, it was a long road, I will say. <laughs> um, I'm originally from Bermuda, and I always wanted to work in fashion. Like, it was the only thing I wanted to do. I had tunnel vision, eyes on the prize uh, from a very young age. I knew I wanted to work with clothes, and I didn't I didn't know what. I didn't know how. I, you know, I'm on a 21-mile island, and I just know I need to leave. And so step one for me was attending Hampton University. And I know for so many Caribbean families, like they are not um, so focused on creative fields. So I actually was like a mass media major. And I remember speaking to a teacher, like I wanna work in fashion, but I don't know how. And I knew I wanted to get clothing. I, I remember very vividly being like, oh, like who puts the clothes on the music videos? And she was like a stylist. And so that kind of, launched my thinking, my thinking of like how I could actually realistically work in this field. So after college, I moved to New York and I started working at Yves Saint Laurent, which is within the Gucci group for the simple fact that I knew that this was a designer who was the first designer to put black women on the runway. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and so I started interning there, eventually was hired, and I kind of moved my way through the industry in, an, in, a, in a very unconventional way. I didn't have just a straight path. Um, I like to say that my career has kind of been like a treasure hunt. Like you never know what the next clue is going to take me. And so I started in public relations, but then I moved to editorial um, just because someone said, have you ever thought about working in a magazine? And the answer was, yes, I, I have thought about that. So I started at W Magazine, I moved to Teen Vogue, and then went to help launch a magazine, CR Fashion Book, before landing at Cosmopolitan. 
And from there, I started to work on bigger productions. So commercials and music videos. Um, the first music video I worked on was uh, Formation. And then I moved on to do uh, some of my favorite work, which was Cranes in the Sky and Don't Touch My Hair with Solange Knowles. Um, and really tried to really start to explore my creativity kind of on a different platform or within a different medium. And I started to work very heavily with one of my best friends, director Melina Matsukis. And she called one day and was like, have you ever thought about costume design? Which led to me to where I am right now. Um, I started to costume design HBO's Insecure uh, with Issa Rae. And it was just a tremendous opportunity. And I had no idea really what I was doing. I just know I have you know, taste and I knew that I could add something to the show and I jumped down. And now we are on our final season. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so, but from costume design, I just, I felt like I was able to storytell in a really different way than what I had done before. Um, from that, I did a pilot in New York City um, that was, based on a graphic comic book. I did Queen and Slim, which I got my first uh, nomination for an award for the Costume Designers Guild and, and then came back to, um, to finish up Insecure. And in between all of that, I still have maintained my other relationships and done other work like red carpet styling. I did uh, Daniel Kaluuya's press run this season. Um, so a little bit of celebrity styling, a lot of brand consulting, creating kind of influencer strategies for them, and um, just like other personal projects and editorial styling as well. Well, congratulations. I know you, you just put 15 years. No, it's so. <laughs> so I have a question for you, and this is for some of the HBCU students that's watching. Um, that maybe, you know, they're trying to determine which path. You talked about styling and you talked about costume designer. What's the distinction between the two? I didn't realize that there was such a huge distinction until I was deep in it. Um, with styling, I feel like if it's editorial, I definitely can feed more into the fantasy. But with costume design, Although I can help viewers dream a little bit, it's rooted very much in reality and it's very character and story driven, which I love. Like I love collaborating with a director, the art director to find out what color is the bedroom, what color are the sheets, what color is this? I work a lot in color. It's like something that I really gravitate to. And so I, those are the type of questions that I get to ask and just be a part of a bigger narrative and a bigger story. I still love kind of styling, but you know, sometimes in an editorial, I can just be very wild and wonderful and uh, not really think about like, is this actually wearable? Would this character in this moment actually wear this? So it's a different type of dreaming. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a little bit more rooted in reality and much more character and, and narrative driven for a costume design. Um, you still get to like play around and you still get to obviously like take creative liberties, but you know, you're, you're really grounded in what's in that script. Okay. Got you. And so you do know that means we're all going to be tuned in to the final season. And we're going to be thinking about you watching these different <laughs> style, um, the characters wearing their style and, and rooting for you. Yeah, th thank you. I, ho I hope so. Um, last season it was, or even my first season, um, I just realized how big and how important it is like working with and dressing a cast of Black women mm -hmm. with stories written by Black women, directed by Black women. And it I mean, I, it was one of the most special experiences of my life. And so from that, I also really pushed my team to find like, okay, who are the black designers we're supporting this week? Like there was not one episode where we weren't supporting like a small emerging black designer. And I think that that became so, it almost became a character within itself, like the costumes. And that was a really special experience. Absolutely. So Knowing that we have the HBCU community watching, how did your HBCU experience at Hampton prepare you for your career in fashion? 
So when I first got to Hampton, I was an economics major, which <laughs> <laughs> which anyone who knows me would be like, you cannot even calculate like tip at a restaurant without like pulling out a calculator. <laughs> But, you know, I, I was like raised to like choose this or like, my parents really wanted me to like pick like a safe study. I wanted to go to a fashion school, obviously. And, you know, they absolutely were against it. But when I was there, I was like, I, there's no way I can be successful in this. And so I switched to English because I've always loved to write. And from English, went, I went to public relations. But in the drama department, there was a history of costume design course. So I took that as an elective and I started to really immerse myself into the Hampton University fashion show because there were no, there's no fashion design program at Hampton. And so you kind of have to seek out those opportunities um, to help you get the knowledge that you are after. And the teachers and the instructors in those courses, when I was like, I'm really interested in fashion, they did all that they could to try and help support that and to give me assignments that supported that. And I'm really grateful for that experience. But I would say um, the Hampton University Fashion Show impacted me so much because I was like styling and this and directing and casting models. And every so often I'll pull out photos from those fashion shows and, and it's so incredible. But leaving Hampton and being you know, plopped into this industry was really special because automatically I would gravitate towards other students that I knew or other professionals that I knew went to historically black colleges and universities because we have a shared experience and we automatically have like a network of support, which is just a beautiful thing. I love it. So for all of the HBCU students, and, and I've always, Shiona, I've always been intrigued with black culture's ability to set trends. And, you know, as an HBCU student myself, going to classes sometimes that was a catwalk within itself oh. just in homecoming <laughs> and imagine that as someone not from america so mm -hmm. i stepped into this campus and i mean i was like the dc girls in the parasuku jeans the new york city swag the Cali, like relaxed, like effortless like i mean it was an education in itself and style for me um, and to see how all these different parts of America kind of blended together into this beautiful melting pot. But it's like, there are certain things that like, I will never forget that also helped to inform my decision styling on the show. Last season, we saw one of the characters have a baby and her character is an AKA. And so I was like, oh, let's make like a little onesie that says like future AKA. And, you know, that is obviously informed by my, you know, my black experience from my black college, I don't think that it would have been so innate or natural for me to do that. And even seeing like the audience's reaction to that, it's like they loved it. And that felt great because I was bringing some of my college experience into this. I always try to throw a little Hampton in certain areas when I can. <laughs> But the girls, the, the characters, they didn't go to um, HBCUs, so I can only, you know, do but so much. But but it still does kind of inform my work. And, you know, even in a music video like Formation, like or, you know, moments where it's like I'm pulling from my experience of watching my college best friends in Ebony Fire at Hampton on the dance teams and things like that. So it's like those those cultural influences have made a lasting impression. And yes, you are absolutely correct that I, I definitely live and die by the statement that black culture informs style. And it's just a fact. It's like, you know, even look at Queen and Slim, like Uncle Earl's fur coat at the funeral, like that's something that is like, that is a black experience. Your uncle showing up and showing out to like show some respects at the funeral, you know? So. It's like those moments of like black style that I have been fortunate enough to like actually inject into my work. I love it. So if you're watching, know that um, you can pull from your HBCU experience in your future career um, and, and know that just a part of our culture, we're setting those trends. Yeah, she, absolutely. I want to hear, um, do you have an example of being told no or, or hearing a no? ever within your fashion industry journey? And what did you do to overcome that? No. <laughs> 
I mean, I've, I've heard no a lot. And I think that we are always taught that, you know, we should not accept no's and kind of like find a way, push through, find another lane to, to get there. And as I have progressed in my career, I just realized that without those no's, I wouldn't be where I am today. And sometimes those no's are either protecting you from a space that you shouldn't be in or having you sit and wait for a better door to open. So while the no's are difficult to hear in that moment, I always think that something better is coming and something that is more for you is on its way. I don't think that anyone's path is the same. And I think that what's for you is gonna be for you. So when you hear those no's, I think it's important to think like, okay, why didn't I get that job? I thought I wanted it. What were the real reasons that I wanted it? What other jobs could make me feel this way? Or maybe it's just like, maybe that's just, that's not my path. So let me dig a little deeper and figure out what my path is. I mean, sometimes you hear a no and that person is wrong. I completely agree. I once pitched a story I'll never forget to New York Magazine. It was earlier out of my career where I wanted to do a fashion shoot of shoes and boots but going to different black colleges and using the dance teams to do it. And they were like, mm, we don't think that that really will resonate. And then immediately after that, homecoming came out and I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and so in that moment, I was really annoyed because I was like, we could have been ahead of the curve. We could have did this. Like, you know, while you didn't understand the concept of this like huge black cultural um, moment, like I believed in it and you should have listened to me, but, and that was a no that I probably still have not gotten over, but, you know, I, I was able to do other stories and like explore creativity in other ways. So, you know, sometimes it's a no that you don't agree with and you have to like listen to your bosses, but other times I think like sometimes with no's, we need to reset and reflect and just think what is a better opportunity for me that's headed my way. Let me prepare myself for that. Such a good perspective. So having even gratitude for the closed doors. Yeah. Um, if I didn't have the closed doors that I had, I just would not be where I am today. Shiona, thank you so much. You know, I, let me tell you, I could just sit here and talk and soak up. <laughs> so, uh, um, here's the thing. As we wind down, how can we support you in your what's next? So, you know, where, where are you going next in terms of driving your dreams forward? And for all of the viewers, how can we support you? That is such an amazing question and such a beautiful question. And it just like reconfirms how, you know, with Black colleges, like we're all one community. I know in the beginning it used to be like, oh, I went to the real HU, but you know. <laughs> So many of my biggest champions and supporters went to Howard. And so now it's just like a funny joke uh, to me. But I think number one, I want everyone to tune in to Insecure this season. Um, okay. The season starts in October and it is, of course, a little bittersweet because we are saying our farewells to our, our favorite ladies. Um, I have other projects in the works that I can't really speak about, but I just hope that if my work speaks to anyone that they, you know, share it, support it, DM me, send me a note, let me know, because, you know, as, as you continue on in your career, um, sometimes you don't really realize how many people are impacted by your work. And it, it's nice to feel those reminders every here and that like every now and then I will admit. Um, I will say one of my dreams is to step outside of fashion and open a boutique hotel concept in Bermuda. Oh. So, mm -hmm. so anyone who's watching or listening that has tips and advice and resources, um, because obviously I am heavily involved and engaged in my community in Bermuda and I do you know, some consulting for Bermuda tourism, but I want to take it a step further and become one of the few or only black female boutique hotel owners on the island and everyone come visit it. Oh, I love it. So listen, that is going to happen. I know. Um, I you got this entire HBCU community. 
We're going to come and support you. Um, <laughs> I, I already am thinking, I'm not going to do it right now, but I already have a contact that I need you to meet. Oh, um, so thank just, you. <laughs> yes. So no, it's my dream. <laughs> <laughs> so we got you. So for the viewers that are watching, um, thank you for tuning in. Shiona's story is one that is such an inspiration and we're grateful that you were willing to share with over 15,000 viewers that will be watching. Go right ahead. I can see oh, some. <laughs> this just popped into my head. I do want to say going back to the no, although I think it's okay. important to, to, to really reflect and think about the balance of hearing no's. And sometimes the no just means something better is happening. When I, I know I just kind of breezed by my first job, how I went and interned at Yves Saint Laurent, but I want to say that when I showed up at YSL, they said, our internship program is full and also we didn't hire you. And I was like, no, I had a conversation and, you know, I, I was, I was incorrect. Yeah. I thought that you could just sit, be like, oh, like you need an intern, I'll be your intern. And someone says like, okay, and you have the job, you know, I was very naive. And she was like, our internship program has already started. It's already full. And um, I showed up every day. Oh. I showed up every day. That was a no that I could not accept. And I was like, I will, I'll be the best intern. You will have no regrets. And you need coffee, I'll get coffee. You need this, I'll get this. And by the end of the week, she was like, oh, fine. <laughs> and I... <laughs> I got so I will say, and that, that boss, you know, completely changed the trajectory of my life because I had never worked in fashion. I had never interned in fashion. I had already graduated. I, you know, eventually needed to be sponsored and have a visa to even stay in America. And, and she's the one person that today, if she called me and, you know, asked for anything, like I, I would do whatever I can to kind of make it happen. Um, but that was a no that I refused to accept because I just knew that this place and that place for me to work was in my, it was in my path, it was in my destiny. And I was just like, they just don't know that yet. I love it. Talk about a story of persistence. <laughs> Whoa. So uh, I'm glad that you went back to that. I am. Um, yeah, so that was that's rich. And especially for all of the HBCU students, knowing that hearing no will be a part of the path and praying for the wisdom to know, is it one of those no's where she only talks about being grateful for the closed door or knowing, is it one of those no's that you just can't accept? Yep. Um, and, and you really have to tune in to know the difference mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. trust your instinct to know the difference. I love it. All right. Well, this has been amazing. Viewers, thank you, thank you, thank you. Follow Shiona. We're going to be there in the last season of Insecure. We're going to be there um, when this Bermuda Hotel opens. <laughs> um, we're going to be in your corner. And so thank you all for tuning in. If you enjoyed this conversation with Shiona, make sure you go check out the other fireside chat that's within this booth with Kalana Barfield-Brown. And also take that Toyota My Style My Way quiz. We're giving away prizes throughout this entire experience. So thank you all for watching. And we want you to drive your dream forward.